I'd now like to help you understand the difference between something called a service endpoint versus a private endpoint. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is we're going to just move this up here and we're going to split the screen in half here. Half of the screen will represent service endpoint, the other half will represent the private endpoint. Okay, and next thing is we're going to have our internet connection here and an internet connection over here. Okay, this is going to represent the Azure environment. This box here. So this is going to be Azure, representing Azure as a whole. And I am just going to copy and uh, paste that over. Okay. All right, let me move the internet up a little bit over here. All right, and there you go. So there's our Azure environment, okay? Um, and the thing you gotta understand is obviously that Azure is producing different types of services. These services are in the forms of, of resources that Azure is providing. And we have different, uh, we have other resources such as virtual machines that need to interact with these different services that are running inside of Azure. For example, uh, you might have a storage account, okay? And that uh, storage account resource obviously is providing uh, access to data, maybe blobs or, or something like that uh, for Azure. Okay, and of course you've got a let's say this is a virtual machine. All right, and let me create a VNet here. This is going to be our VNet, and then over here we have a subnet. So the, the virtual machine is sitting on a subnet, okay? So all that's fine and dandy, right? Uh, now, this virtual machine uh, needs to interact with that storage account. Now, traditionally, the way that storage accounts work and some other services in Azure is they're connected to the internet, and what happens is your virtual machine goes, would, it would end up having to use the uh, address of the storage account to get to it. It actually have to go out to the internet. You know, I think we can all agree that doesn't make a lot of sense if the storage account is on the Azure network and the virtual machine is on the Azure network. Why can't this virtual machine just talk directly to the storage account? Well, that is exactly what a service endpoint does. Okay, A service endpoint allows virtual machines to be able to communicate directly with uh, storage accounts on the Azure environment without having to go out to the internet and then back in. Okay, uh, now you're going to find that this is essentially also what a private endpoint does. But let's talk about some differences. With service endpoints, you could have multiple storage accounts, and when you uh, enable a service endpoint, all storage accounts in your region become available to that virtual machine to communicate with directly. No longer does it have to go out to the internet and then back in, can talk to those directly. Now, with a, let's copy this information and we're gonna move it over to the private endpoint side of things. This is the private endpoint method. With a private endpoint, it's a one-to-one -one connection, okay? Uh, and so what ends up happening is when you establish a private endpoint, you are just going to attach uh, a single storage account. Now, to clarify, something else that's kind of interesting here is that your storage account will actually get a VNIC. Okay? And that VNIC, that virtual network, can be attached to the subnet and that storage account is linked through that VNIC and it can have a private IP address. Over here, these storage accounts continue to have their public address, but when your virtual machine hits the public address, maybe it, it queries the DNS name of the storage account or whatever, uh, even though it's hitting the public address, it never leaves the Azure network. It never actually has to route outside of Azure onto the internet and back in. It stays within Azure. And that's the way it would work for both of these. But with a private endpoint, uh, when you set that up, the storage account gets a VNIC associated with it, which can be associated with the subnet, and the virtual machine 
can talk to that VNIC and talk to the storage account directly. And it is a one-to-one -one communication. So this storage account would be accessible by this v VM without having to go out to the internet, but this one would not. Okay. And so you really kind of have to, to decide which route you want to go. It's, a, it's more work, obviously, to do it this way, but there are the benefit of having a private address and you have that one-to-one -one, uh, communication going if you want. Mm -hmm. um, but ultimately, you can still go this route and get the job done quickly. And, I, and my experience has been most people just, do, just enable service endpoints uh, and not do a whole lot with private endpoints. But you have both options available to you and um, they're relatively easy to activate. Hey, this is John Christopher. I hope you enjoyed that video, and I want you to know that I'm trying really hard to grow this channel, so I hope you'll give me a like and a subscribe. Also, if you'll check the description in this video, I've got a link for you that can show you how you can get access to all my different courses. I have lots of different Microsoft certification courses that'll help you pass your exam. All right, thanks a lot for watching the video, and I hope to see you again.